Hey, what's going on guys? Chris here with DIYE65E66.com. In today's video, we're gonna be doing the FM Tuner mod. Now, a lot of you guys are watching this because you either might be in between doing the FM Tuner mod or doing the AUX stock genuine cable mod. From what I've researched, I spent several hours looking at all the different options and it looks like for the cheapest, I'm gonna go ahead and do the FM Tuner mod and not the actual OEM genuine AUX cable input that it was a feature on the 2007 E65, E66s and above. Unfortunately, my car is a 2006. We're gonna go inside in just a second here, but I do not wanna to have to deal with potentially my early model 06 not being compatible. You have to also code software. Can be done, but I probably will never do that to this car because it just costs a lot of money for upgrading the units, buying the parts on eBay, etc. Anyway, back to the mod here. So what we have here is we have a nice long, it's actually a male AUX cable, regular male AUX cable here but then it comes up here to actually a two female splitters you do not need this this is just some cable that I actually had lying around the house already and then I have another male coming up to a female so total length is going to be about 15 feet or so maybe 12 feet to 15 feet is what we're going to need for this project again you do not need the splitter that's an option if you want to go reverse style and go single to the splitter on the double end actually I probably will do that and so that you could have two splitters up if you wanted to let's say, listen on headphones and listen through the AUX cable. I mean, I'm not sure why you would do that, but anyway, that is an option, but you're gonna be picking up a AUX cable regardless. I would go with about 12 to 15 feet or so. I will go ahead and link that below the different options in the description box. So what we're gonna do with this one, once we tear out the FM tuner, we're actually gonna be cutting off this and we are gonna be stripping the wire and soldering it into the FM tuner. So now that we've seen the cable, what we're gonna need need here. Also, I'll link the type of soldering iron you're going to need. Very inexpensive and solder. What we're going to do here, the very first thing you need to do is disconnect your battery. Obviously, I need to move this stuff out of the way. We need to get to the battery case inside here and we actually need to pull off the negative terminal. So we're going to kill all electrics to the car because we will be working close to the airbag in the rear driver's side. So we don't want to potentially blow that airbag in our face. So let's go ahead and disconnect the battery. Okay, you open this up right here, take out your jack, my jack is right down there, and then you go ahead and just pull up that little plastic piece just like that. We'll go ahead and set that out of the way there, and then we see our battery right down here. Let me get some light on that, and again, we're just going to take some 10 mils, loosen that up here, pull that negative terminal off, making sure it doesn't reconnect itself. We'll go ahead and push it out of the way, then we'll get started on our project. Now, also, I did want to mention, if you want to double up and do a male, again, we're going to be snipping off one side into a male up front, but I thought it'd be a little bit more sleeker instead of having this little cable wire I got to like twist up in a knot and put it in my center console and have this loose wire. What I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be having, again, the female end like this, and so when I'm not using it, I can go ahead and just then again have another brand new right here, AUX cable, the male portion that fits into the female portion. Again, so there's two different options of doing this. You can go male all the way up to the very front and have the cord plug it in whenever you want or leave it plugged in but I'm gonna be having the female portion we'll tucked in really discreetly. Then I'll go ahead and use probably a shorter one than this, but something the passenger has access to as well. Okay, there's our negative terminal right there. There's one nut and two nut. Loosen that up with 10 mil, and then go ahead and pull that battery terminal straight off. You'll hear the electrics kill of the car. It'll probably go wee, a little whine on you for just a second. Okay, and you don't have to take the nuts off all the way. Just loosen them up real nicely. And then again, pull your adapter right off the top there, and I just set it over to the side there, so it's not going to go ahead and flap back and touch the negative terminal right there. Okay, sweet. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the back driver's side right here, and we're looking at the headrest right here. And then we have, of course, the side panel here. If you need better access to it, you can remove the headrest, which I might do in just a second here. Okay, that gives better access right there. Just push this little button, come straight up. So now what we're doing, guys, is we need to go ahead and pop our little dash trim remover here. If you don't have a trim remover, you can use a flathead screwdriver. Just be careful, you don't want to rip or anything like that on the side there. And we're gonna go ahead and just pop off that airbag, which will present a torque bolt underneath, which I'll give you the size in just a second. I honestly found it the easiest just to slip a razor blade underneath very carefully and it just pops out very gently. 
and very easily, again, just slip the razor blade, pop it out. Easiest thing to do than a thick trimmer right there. Now we're presented right here with a T25. I repeat, a T25. Go ahead and loosen that bolt up, and then we're gonna go ahead and pull this panel off right here. And if you do see scuffs and fingerprints, that was not me, probably a previous owner. Looks like someone was already working, maybe for the tent job. Their hands weren't clean, that's a shame. Might be able to get some resolve or something on that to clean that up. Okay, the bolt's out. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our panel here. This is where you probably want your trim set here, and I'm gonna do it with two hands. I'm gonna get it underneath here, pop that out there. Okay, this is the back of it right here. Now notice these little notches here, they slip out. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your trim and you wanna go ahead and just get it at the bottom, pop those, those little sliders out, and then it go ahead and just shoves out like that off those little notches right here. And these are the little tabs that you need to pop up. There's three of them, one down there, two and three. And then it slips right on out and we see another T-nut here, which should be a T-20. Let me get my T-20 and double check that real quick. Correct, that is a T-20. So T-25 on the outside, T-20 on the inside. And this is why you disconnect your battery because now, as we see here, there are tabs right underneath here that we need to go ahead and release. I just took my screwdriver and there's actually a little itty bitty, and there's a very small notch as we can see right there. And you just put your flathead screwdriver in there, lift that up like that, and then it removes like that. So there's one, and then we also have another one right up here. So there's two on top of this here. So the second one is right here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I made a discovery and it looks like either A, this car had a problem with the FM tuner before I got it and I got it at about 76,000 miles or B, this might have been in an accident and they repaired it and put a new airbag in. I'm not really sure, but I thought this dirt was from the tent. But no, since this tab is broken, that means they have accessed this panel before already. So that is a telltale sign right there. Okay, so with those removed, now this can easily go ahead and just pull on down here. You do have a couple little clips that unclip, as we heard just made some noise there and then it fishes straight out right there. So this is your major clip. So this is the major clip that's holding in this one right here. And then it just slides straight out like that. And there is our FM tuner right there. All right guys, now on the top of the FM tuner, we see two bolts, one right there and one right there. Those are T25. You wanna go ahead and remove those bolts. Again, right where my middle finger is and right there, right on the top. Okay, now with both those bolts undone here on the top again, right up here. Now we see this little harness here and it should just clip right in, but we do need to be careful. There's little push in tab right over here where my my pointy finger is there we go there okay and you just push that in pull straight out right there but we do need to be careful because there is another ribbon attached to the back of it here so let's go ahead and gently get this out of the way here pull this guy up and see what we got okay just gently bring it out watch these two little metal things here go ahead and arc it down again just two bolts even though there is spacing for four again there's only two bolts but remember we do have our ribbon cable back here connected and there is some nice slack on there as well. So when you have it about this far back here, I'm gonna again use two hands and we'll go ahead and detach that ribbon cable there. There's two tabs on each side. You push it in and pull out. Okay, now with it fully out, both ribbons, again, there's a small one that we couldn't really see. There's the one we could see. That's the top of it. That's how you would mount it back up in there. Let's go take this cover off and start soldering. Okay, for the cover here, there's little notches that these little things slip down in. Go ahead and just slip your screwdriver in and just slightly prong it backward to release the tabs from those little slotches. And then that will come right off again. Very simple there. Just be gentle with that because that is bendable aluminum. I mean, obviously you could bend it back into place. And now we see our board here. What we wanna do, because we should be soldering to the back of it here, I'm gonna go ahead and now be very, very careful again, bending these tabs so ever so slightly without damaging any components over here on this side, removing this little shield here. Okay, then that just comes right up right there. And then 
can go ahead and set that aside here. Alrighty, now we're looking at the board here. And the area we want to solder, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be over here on the big chip right here. Again, you're looking at the left-hand side, the big chip right here. We're going to come in real nice and, and micro here. And I'm going to get you the exact spots where we're going to put the left, right, and ground. So now we need to get our AUX cable and strip it. And then we're going to go ahead and show you exactly where to put those. We're going to take our wire cutters and we're going to just cut the head right off of it to expose three wires. Then we're gonna strip down the wires until we expose the copper on each one. As I strip the rubber off of the main AUX cable, now it comes down to three, a black, a red, and a green. Yours might be blue, but the black is gonna be ground. We'll make the red the right and the green will be left. Now let's go ahead and strip the ends off of these so that we can solder the tips to the board. Just like that there. Okay, now with the wire stripped down, we're actually looking at the board here with a small ribbon cable on this side and the large connector on the left side, okay? So now the big chip is over here on the right-hand side and we're gonna be soldering right through the middle area right here. I'm gonna include a couple pictures because I just can't get it too detailed even with my magnifying glass and pointing to the right ones. So I'm gonna include two pictures right now. Just pause it, look at the one previous and then the one after he solders it and then I'll show you mine after I'm done soldering it as well. And all credit goes to him for those photos. That was on a BMW forum board and I'll try my best to include his username. If not, uh, please forgive me on that one. Anyway, so what we're gonna be doing is, again, we're gonna be concentrating right through this area here. I'm actually gonna be using a Flux Kester 951 pin, and I'm gonna go ahead and dab the locations where I'm gonna be soldering. It makes life a lot simpler the solder flows to the flux. I definitely recommend picking one of these up. Again, I'll have all this stuff listed in the description box below the video. Definitely wear a ventilated mask or be in a ventilated area. You're not supposed to breathe the fumes in from this. I have a regular small pencil tipped soldering iron here. And then I have just a little bit of solder right here. Due to the complexity of this, I'm actually gonna be soldering it off camera. I'll try to set up camera if possible. And then I'll show you my work after I'm done. All right guys, here are my soldering points right here. Red Red, green, red, right, green, left, black, ground, right there. Again, go back and look at the pictures exactly where you need to be. Easiest way that I did it, it took a little bit of time. First one did, second and third one were very quickly. If you already know how to solder and use a flux pin and soldering pin, then you are all good to go. But what I did is I put a little bit of the flux on top of my wire and then I put a little bit of solder on the wire first, and then I put a dab of flux on the soldering point, and then I soldered it down, and then it stuck really nicely, and that's how I did that. Then with the cover here, I've actually drilled a hole so my female end can fit through, and then I've packed some electrical tape around the edges there to make it soft so it doesn't stick on the sharp edge there, and then we're gonna go ahead and latch that top back on, nice and firm, and again, these cords will go ahead and just lay out to the side there. Probably you want to maybe keep them away from the chip if you want to lay them this way here. And again, there is a point where it hits the ground, so we're actually going to take our pliers and remove the third flap right there, the one that would actually touch the ground on that black one. Okay, and the inner one I didn't like lay down and smash down because the cord actually raises it up just a tiny bit. So what I did is I held down one end of it here. I put the cord down again the bottom. So now with the label facing towards us, right here is a beautiful little already done notch. I just slipped it right down at the bottom there. Again, our top screws go back up top like that. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be feeding it this direction towards the front harness, bringing it up towards the front harness and out. And then we're gonna go ahead and of course, hide it securely. That will be in just a little bit. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip back in both our cables, again in the back and in the front and then we're just kind of kind of leave it dangling right here just for a split second because we will be checking our work now we don't want to fidget with the airbag once our battery is on again we're just going to plug it in leave it right here and then we're going to plug it in and test it to make sure it's working before we seal everything back up 
Okay, everything's clipped in. Now let's go plug our battery back in and test. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's actually the next day and I had an issue with my wire. I probably should have checked to make sure the wire actually worked because I had it in storage for a while. It was a bad wiring. So I actually had to come back over here and attach another AUX cable that I knew for sure worked. Again, test out your cable so you don't have to resolder it or thinking you didn't do a good job. It officially works now. I have my top off here plugged in, of course, with the battery in. Be careful, of course, of the airbag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this. Of course, this is a short cord, so I'm actually going to have to run a, an adapter all the way through. So I'll probably plug that into a female and then into another male. Obviously, Obviously, that's not going to be that big of an issue as long as you have a good connection, but you might want to go ahead and order yourself the 15 footer, 20 footer, again, linked below instead of using a male to a female or a female to a male. Anyway, you guys get the idea. So let's go ahead and demonstrate what this is. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the radio on a really high frequency channel, and that would be Los Angeles Kiss FM. So let me go ahead and do that now, and you guys can hear it. I am in my garage, so we might hear a, a little static from the radio. I can't play the songs too long because of a copyright, but let me show you exactly what happens here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is the radio is on. I'm going to plug it in to my iPhone here. Hold on one second. Okay, and then it plugs on in. Now I'm actually hearing the radio very, very little, very, very little. If you guys can pick that up in the background because it's plugged in, but watch what happens. It totally cuts it off entirely when I play. And again, I can't play too long because of uh, copyright, but let's play some U2. And that is full HD, no static, no popping, no nothing. It actually sounds better than the radio. Then we go ahead and pull it back out and it goes back to the radio. And then again, we're gonna plug it back in and then hit play. Sweet, I'm definitely excited about this. Now we just need to run the cord appropriately down the edge here. But I did notice that after I did just pause it right now, it's absolutely spot on. I don't hear any low frequency of radio or anything. It's almost like the digital converter has converted and knows what to play now. Okay, let's go ahead and watch this. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. We hear the radio. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it back in. And I hear very, very little with a couple little pops that goes away after about maybe three or four pops. Very subtle pops, and then I'm gonna play it again. And then I'm gonna pause it. And then all very low tone of radio and popping goes completely away. My guess is it's converting it somewhere on the board. That's a little bit over my head. We can even stream some Pandora. Let's go ahead and fire up some Pandora real quick. And you two will cut out. When my remixes come on, Pandora music, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes. And that, my friends, is how you get an AUX cable when you do not have an AUX cable. Now, I just got to figure out how to run it up. Oh, hit that beat, yo. Hit that beat. Come on. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yo. Okay, so now what we have to do is we're going to figure out either we're going to use our cigarette adapter here to bring the cable up right here really custom, or we're going to put a charging dock for my iPhone lightning connector right here because this is not in use right now. We do have a 12 volt outlet right here, which is awesome to get power if necessary. So there are some modifications that we're going to be doing to finish this up. Anyway, whoa, come on now. Hitting that beat, son. Come on, let's turn that up. That's better bass. Right into the digital and tuner, baby. There's a limit to 